She's going to talk about an organization with a bunch of contests. I am. All right, please help me welcome Mary Lamont.
One of the things that I discovered after reading the book 400 times was ballots are supposed to be put inside of envelopes. envelopes. Many, many, many contests don't do that. Now, when I used the envelope system, I also told the judges which envelope was for which ballot because you judge four contests. If there's Something certainly you. is uh, room for error. So I just label everything. The one thing that was, it's empty right now because it's in my computer, but the one thing that was probably the most helpful is Ernie Rayner, who's very organized also, put all of the contest forms on a CD. Mm -hmm. Now in the past, when I've done this, I've had to go to TI website every time I wanted to pull down a form. Well, you know how that works. It takes time. So you can put them on a disk or you can just create a folder, but get all of your forms. If you're chief judge, get all of your forms where you can get to them easily. Anybody else ever have those problems where you had to go back and go back and go back, okay. So this was an invaluable thing. I also organized for the Toastmaster, and Randall was my victim of that. <laughs> and he survived. But everything, again, labeled, I overlabel things, I'm sure. Put in, in order of how I wanted it done, like the awards, I wanted the, I won't say lesser contest, but the, the, in this case, it was the evaluation contest and then the humorous contest. So controlling Mary wanted it done certain ways, right? But again, it, I, I think it helped, especially if you have a brand new person who's never been the Toastmaster for a contest before. Because you start getting <laughs> into multiple contests on the area of division levels, and it's like, whoa. Another thing that I learned was always carry extra forms, <laughs> right? <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes judges mess up, they want a different form, or you brought the wrong form or whatever. The other thing that I learned, of course, the ballot counters have their own folder and they have their ballots and they're, again, labeled, labeled, labeled. They're starting to see a pattern here for me. Okay. And of course, the, the uh, timers also have their, their, own, their own folder. But it says, please return the folder. I don't want to buy for every contest, okay? So this was just a way that I have evolved in making sure that the judges know which form to use, it's labeled, which contest, because like we combine T and U, is this the folder, or the ballot T contest or U contest, because you don't want those good stuff. The envelopes and the disks. And the last thing I think that I found I have seven minutes, is presenting awards in a nice um, format. Rather than just handing a piece of paper, sometimes it's really nice. These are not that expensive at Office Depot. They're like a package of 10 for whatever. But they really, kind of, I think, kind of add to it, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I have two different versions, depending on what they have in stock. But I think organizing, if you can do it up front, and sometimes it takes me a couple of days to put all this together. I'm getting a better system. I'm mean, more comfortable with the system. But not trying to do it the day of. And even pre-printing your signatures on the certificates. They're not handwritten, but heck, nobody can read my handwriting anyway. So uh, this was a certificate I didn't give to Anita the last time, but you know, everything pre-printed, because I've seen people in the back writing, and, and you know, they deserve a little bit more than that. All right, questions or your own way of organizing. Paul. One suggestion I would put out there for anybody, especially at the club level, but going on up, is if you're a chief judge and you're looking for judges, you need to make sure 
can ask each person you, you want to be a judge, are you planning on competing this season? Oh, I good point point out good point. at clubs and higher contest because every person who was going to be a judge agreed to be a judge for me at my own clubs contest. And then I, after the contest, I only then remembered, you guys aren't planning, none of you are planning on competing in the club contest, are you? And they said, yes, yes. we are. Yeah. And that automatically negates them. That's a, yeah, that's a good point. They, they can't compete at, in the same contest. Yeah, just change So ask them first. Just change the rule. Yes, it states number five, contest chairs, chief judges, voting judges, timers, counters, sergeant of arms, and test speakers may not compete in the contest at which they are serving. So you can, if you're competing in the international, you can judge table topics or vice versa. But for me, again, and, and sometimes it's happened and sometimes it hasn't, I like to get the same judges for all four contests. It's not always possible. One year we had this brainstorm that area governors should be part of the judging team. I want to tell you <laughs> what a nightmare that was. Okay, they belong to this club and they can't judge this contest and it's better if you can just get neutral people. But I think that's one of the things the panel's going to discuss is how do you pick judges? Remind me what your position is as you are describing these folders. Are you speaking as a division governor preparing for a contest or are you speaking as a chief judge preparing for a contest? I'm speaking for anyone who is preparing. I like to do, if I'm chief judge, I like to do my own preparation, but other chief judges may want to do their preparation. I'm just showing anybody who's interested. So I think there's some discussion on whether the chief judge prepares all the forms of the context chamber. Yes? I think that's why I asked can, can that be a joint activity between the contest chair and the chief judge? I'm like you. If I'm chief judge, I will do the prep for the judges because if I make a mistake, then who do I have to blame? What? And that's much better. Yeah, that, that's my preference. But not every chief judge has that time. Cassandra? One thing that I like that Mary did when I was the chief judge was that she gave me a list of all the competitors, all of the contests, their names, and which club they were a member of. Because it's not a perfect world, and sometimes the expected judge don't show up. And then you're trying to find a judge on the spot. Yeah, yeah. and that happened to us at our division contest. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. Again, I'm not, I don't recall what the rule book says about whether the contest chair or the chief judge, but I think you guys can work that out. I'm just giving you an idea. Who's responsible for getting Responsibility the for getting the paperwork. And in the rules, it's the chief judge, but in practicality, often the contest chair will work with the chief judge to get Absolutely. But I'm a control freak, so I won't do that. <laughs> okay, yeah. are you saying that if we belong to you, we cannot be a judge? No, I didn't say okay. that. It was if you're competing. But but if we belong to a club of you, we can be a judge even though we can do contest? As long as your club is a representative. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you say that again? If you are a judge, Let's say I'm a, I'm a judge and one of the morning club people are competing. I cannot be a judge. For that. For, for that. member yeah. of that club. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't yeah. judge a fellow club member. At the club level. At the club level, kind of anything goes. You're, you're going to, to give your people experience. But once you get up into area, division, and district, there are regulations on whether you can judge your own uh, club member, okay? And mostly it's no. I believe that, that you have license to, to go with the rules or make the judgments at club level, but it stops right there. It stops right there. And the, the rule book is, is pretty clear.
clear. Beth, one more question. Okay, uh, this may not be in your we're, we're purview. We're going to have a panel of experts. Okay, <laughs> this may not be in your purview, but could you talk a little bit about the budget for the contest? There is no budget. That's the end. Okay. <laughs> there is no budget. I <clears throat> your question. <laughs> now, if you want to charge, that's certainly up to we tried to get away from that when Ed was district governor last year by the district buying the trophies so we didn't have to charge. And the idea was to get more people there. But certainly, you know, I've seen donations for food and things like that. But there is no budget. Right, Bruce? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Obviously, it has been done in the past, and you must be careful about it. If you are charging, you do not charge the contestant. That's right. You keep that in mind. The contestant comes free. What about the contestants, family, that are family or friends that are not contestants? Hey, 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 everybody else has to pay. No free lunch. Because I saw people walk away from the contest because they were being charged, and they were just friends. They were just being cheap. If if a contest would say, do you contest is collecting money? Where does the money go? The money is supposed to go for the expenses. Okay, of but what if they? If, they if you've got something money. left over, you're not supposed to make a profit. First of all, I mean, <laughs> that's the key to it. The international says no profit. So, but if you do end up with money, you're supposed to give it back to give it up to the district. All right, we're going to take a 10-minute break.